Welcome back. In order to wrap up this unit on uh, basis functions, and as it turned out on integration as well, I would like to say a little bit about um, slightly different uh, basis functions that are still polynomials, but are um, maybe not quite as clean and uh, as, as the ones that we've been working with so far. Okay, so. Uh, the, the, the motivation for these types of basis functions comes from the fact that, especially in two dimensions and three dimensions, uh, the quadrilateral in two dimensions and the hexahedron in three dimensions are actually not the simplest um, space-filling uh, figures, right? In 2D, there's a simpler uh, figure that fills space or a simpler sort of structure that fills space. and uh, do you recall what it is? The triangle, right? And in 3D, it's a tetrahedron, right? In fact, for that reason, partly for that reason, they're also called simplices in the corresponding spaces, okay? So what we're going to look at uh, here for completeness is um, what I may call in general simplex elements. Right, and this by sort of by definition is in 2D and 3D. Okay, so let's look at 2D first. Right, so what we will look at here are triangular elements, triangular elements. with linear basis functions. Okay? Now everything is exactly the same except that, um, you know, our fi finite element formulation and all of that is exactly the same, except that we just don't work with quadrilaterals, right? Instead, we're interested in looking at uh, subdomains omega e, which in general have that sort of uh, arbitrary um, scalene triangle shape. Okay? Um, so this is our omega e. We could have A equals 1, 2, and 3, okay? And uh, everything's exactly the same. So we have three degrees of freedom here. If you, uh, you know, think of uh, something like our um, um, heat conductivity problem, right, or our mass diffusion problem, right, essentially linear elliptic PDE in three dimensions with scalar variables, right? Um, so we'd have, in this case, three degrees of freedom. We'd have uh, NNE equals 3, all right? And we take the same approach that we took in the case of um, quadrilateral elements, right, where this triangle is thought of as being constructed as or, or as being obtained as a mapping from a parent domain, right? So since it's a triangle, we, we obtain it from a triangle also in this parent domain, okay? It's also two-dimensional, so we have our coordinates there. Um, as before, we have C1 and C2. Okay, except, uh, well, here's one of the differences. In uh, the case of triangular elements, this parent domain is not by unit. It is simply a unit domain. Okay, so then this is the point 0, 0. This is the point 1, 0, right? C1 equals 1, C2 equals 0, and that's the point 0, 1. All right, okay, it's a unit domain. mean. 
Okay? Now, all we really need to do is define the basis functions. Once we've defined the basis functions, everything proceeds just as before. Um, the way this is done is it is conventional to label this, this uh, node in the parent domain as node 1. This is node 2. And the origin is node 3. Okay? Right? So we have three basis functions, right? And the way these things are set up is that although we have a two dimensional um, domain, and so we truly need course only two coordinates in that two-dimensional domain, we do go ahead and define a third coordinate, okay? And the third coordinate is uh, the following, right? So what we do is also define C3, which is simply 1 minus C1 minus C2. All right. The reason for doing this is well simply because one can. One doesn't really need to do it. One can work without it. But but once once one does this, the definition of basis functions becomes uh, very convenient. 